Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to cover an open source video editor that I just became aware of from the KDE project called uh, KDEN Live, KDE and Live, one of those. Anyway, cue the video. Okay, so. Uh, I was away for Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a fantastic time with their families and had some time to reminisce on what they're grateful for and thankful for. Uh, really, I had a great time. I, I traveled to see some folks out of state and it was just a really good time to get a fresh change of scenery and I wasn't here, so sorry there wasn't any video last week, but we're continuing on. So, I honestly, I, if you know the, the way this is supposed to be said, please let me know because I don't know if this is KDE or KDEN Live. I know it's again part of the KDE project, but I'm going to go with KDEN Live. Uh, comment uh, below if that's uh, not correct, but that's what I'm going with because that's how it sounds out. So if this is your first time to the channel, again, my name is Nate. This is Photo Learningism. On this channel, I do a lot of work to surface free or cheap tools uh, to enhance the art community. I'm hoping to build a community of learning. I welcome your feedback as long as it's family friendly and constructive. And I really want us to help each other build up experience and draw awareness to things that we can get things done efficiently uh, and just enjoy art. Really, that's what this is about. So thank you for joining in. I want to do KDEN Live tonight. and. Uh, Let's see what it can do. So this is an open source, again, video editor. And the reason I wanted to do this, I did a different open source editor called OpenShop before, which is, again, a great tool. It has some other capabilities, which I don't see here. But this one, I was just so impressed with how intuitive the user interface was designed. It was so well done because I was able to find what I was looking for very quickly based on my previous experience with video editors. <clears throat> and I'm reaching back to, uh, again, from to Adobe Premiere going way back to version 6. So I was really familiar with kind of the keyboard shortcuts and things that work with that, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that many of them carried over into this tool. So that was just, it was so easy for me to pick this up and try it out. So I want to show you what, what happens here. Coming into it, again, I could not find a limitation on the file formats that are supported. It just seems to be very open-ended there. Uh, if you happen to find a dead end, comment below and let us know. But as far as I can see, it seems to work with anything I'm throwing at it, and really any Kodak I'm throwing at it either. Um, there was a little caveat coming into it here where it gives you a search for area, and I tried videos up front. That did not work. I mean, it showed me stuff here, but when I clicked on it, it threw a funny error and it kind of confused me. So what I ended up doing is actually navigating into where I have videos the long way here, and that seems to work just fine. So uh, do it that way. <laughs> if you're on the Windows platform, I don't know if it works differently on Linux, because again, this is a cross-platform tool. So give that a shot, but select what you want. That gets imported, and it does have to do a little bit of transcoding along the way. Uh, depending on the format, again, I don't know exactly uh, which ones it must do that or which ones are natively done that way but um, it might happen so <laughs> that's how you import stuff down below this is really easy in that um, you have your video V for video A for audio which is really nice and clear uh, you can name them which is super handy and it by default will draw out the waveform which is also again really really helpful to see that right away uh, to grow or expand the timeline it's control roll with the mouse and you can get a really good idea of where things are again I just thought that was really really great good design scrubbing is really easy just drag the uh, the player around the preview is really good at keeping pace, and this computer I'm using, this is not a new computer. It's already a few years old, and it's really not having trouble keeping up with this. Um, I'm not really noticing any significant bounce or troubles with it. Um, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised at how well it responds with the limited resources of this, this computer. Uh, so, 
Very impressed there, very impressed with the timeline approach. A lot of free tools don't have the timeline. You can find a lot of free resources that, <laughs> I just noticed my face up there, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, a lot of free tools don't have um, this timeline approach and that's really a crucial feature if you're gonna get anything meaningful done in a video editor or anything of substance because you gotta be able to layer things and stack them up and work with them and you just can't do that in a single track editor effectively um, with a lot of the freebies that are out there. So this is a fantastic, smooth, intuitive interface uh, that works very well and very cleanly. Um, cutting is very simple. Uh, what you would do is line it up to where you want and when you find the space that you're looking for you would right click on the clip and then you have to do split I believe it is yep and that gives you a gap and you can literally click and drag over and edit against that endpoint and endpoint uh, to make those edits you can drag those around further and you can transition between those two or just use the hard cut as it goes it's beautiful love it the effects that are out there this is where I just, I was wowed in that there is a plugin here for chroma keying, which is amazing. And for that reason alone, you should go download this tool. I'll put a link in the description below because that's a powerful feature and it does work. I was playing around a little bit with it, uh, but I saw it work uh, with a little bit of my intro here. If I can manage to look it up there under effects, I think it's under the adjustments uh, let's see let's see if we can find it while I'm on the spot huh <laughs> am I looking at the right one? Oh, I think it's under transform there it is chroma key and if I drag that in that is now attached to the clip here I don't know if you can see that very well but it's here and when I click on the clip, it brings it up in the effects view here. And I can play a little bit to play with the amount of keying effect going on. And you can see it over here in the monitor window that that's processed in real time. Again, that's really, really great. In fact, as I was playing with these effects, what I found is that it's pushing them to memory. And you might think, well, that's, that's kind of risky because then you're really putting a lot of burden on the memory. But in this case, the whole piece of software is just so lightweight somehow that it's not even on this old system it is not taxing my system at all to do this in real time and it doesn't force me to recompile and render as I do these effects now that may change I haven't layered on tons of stuff and it may hit a threshold but initially that's an amazing productivity thing where it's just in real time in memory doing it for you and you can you can do this <laughs> that's cool <laughs> I'm just really impressed with that so Definitely check it out. There's, there's a ton of stuff in here that you can play with. I didn't really get a chance to dig through them all. I might do another video on the top five that are most effective, but have a dig through. Awesome, awesome stuff that's in there. Um, another thing to note that when you're ready to export, uh, there is a, a 4K mode uh, that I noticed that's out there, which again, coming out in a free tool, awesome stuff. If you wanna go work high res and if you're bringing 4K footage in, it's here you don't have to pay for that functionality my gosh again more reasons that you would uh, you would need this tool this free tool that's out there so 4k you may have noticed as I flew by it before uh, that it does have a DVD wizard capability and to my quick playing with that that seems to be a Linux only feature comment below if that's wrong but I played with it a little bit it didn't seem to be there and when I went looking for it it seemed to be a Linux only thing so um, I'm a Windows user for the moment. I'm playing around a little bit with Linux, but right now my primary platform is still Windows. So that seems to be a limited thing. That may not matter to you because everything is going on demand, or at least most things are. But for those of us like myself who still have a DVD collection, still have DVD players, that could be important to you if you still have clients or customers who still have DVD uh, capability and expect to maintain that, uh, that could be a thing. Or if you just want to make videos that people are not doing marketing research on you while you're watching stuff. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or all or anything like that, but um, that could be another reason to do that. Just throwing that out there. So that's really the product. Again, it's KDEN uh, Live or KDEN Live 
Link in the description below to download. Go check it out. Awesome, awesome tool. Very simple to download and install. And I'm loving it as I play with it. Um, and again, this is Photo Learningism. My name is Nate. Please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. And please let me know uh, what about this was good for you. If you've used it, let me know the features that I may not have mentioned because I would like to do some follow-up on this and highlight the powerful functions that you can use, again, for free in this tool. Uh, join up, join the conversation, watch the other videos, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for joining in this experience. Take care.